How's it going Godzilla fans, Kaiju fans, collectors, and just general people of YouTube? This is Chanzilla1964 coming back to you with yet another figure review. Today we're going to be reviewing the figures from the new movie of Godzilla vs. Kong, or not, sorry, Godzilla vs. Kong, but Godzilla x Kong, the new empire. And we have the Godzilla Evolved version and Kong with the Beast Glove. Without further ado, let's get into this review because it is an exciting one. I love these figures, in short. Starting off with Godzilla here, let's just go through it really quick. For detail, the detail work on this guy is really, really nice. Granted, Godzilla's face is a little bit um, off looking, but it does look quite a bit quite a bit better than the 2019 Godzilla face. So I will give credit where credit is due. And I like how it has a lot more spiky detail because in general, this Godzilla in this movie is a lot more spiky. Now. We have the dorsal plates, which, elephant in the room, the dorsal plates are very, very nicely detailed. Um, they look like how they're supposed to look like. And while there is minimal detail, um, and the minimal detail is reminiscent to the 2019 figure, it is still very nice detail on these dorsal plates for Godzilla. So I hugely appreciate it. And then they're going to continue down the tail. And you're going to have a very similar tail pattern as there was for the 2019 where they had these two this spike over here that travels down and the spikes stop actually midway through and then they continue in the thegomizers which i really really like the thegomizers they are pretty much just spikes with no surface detail which i'm cool with i would have wished there's a little bit of surface detail but i'm cool with it because the thegomizers are really really nice and i prefer them being a little smaller than what they actually are in the movie because I think it's crazy that Godzilla is going to have big spikes growing out of the tip of his tail all of a sudden from resting in the ice for like a short amount of time. So, yeah. While we're on the tail, the tail detail is very nice. There's some little scars and scratches and cracks in Godzilla's tail. One stopping kind of around here. And yeah, I like the detail. It's really, really nice. I love how there's this little inconsistency with this plating going along his tail as well. I thought it's a very nice detail. I like that. And I'm just noticing it now, so not really bullshitting it. Um, underside of the tail detail, very, very nice. Very simple. Very reminiscent of the 2019 Godzilla. And yes, I am digging that. At first, I thought this was pretty much the same mold, just with different dorsal plates. But I am seeing that is not the case. And I do not have the 2019 mold off the shelf to show you, sadly. So that's going to be a video review for another video for another time if you guys want to see it let me know in the comment section down below if you do want to see something like that comparing the 2019 figure to this figure because we have well established this is a different figure moving on to the body for detail the body detail is very nice very nice crocodilian looking godzilla monsterverse looking detail um you got the scale spiky scales over here um going continuing down the leg and then you have the armored plating here little bit of armor plating over here on the near the back here a little bit of rigid work over here as well and yeah i mean the armor plating detail on this guy is really they put all the stops with him really really nice continues down the leg all the way down the leg until you get to the toes where they continue the toes i mean whew, i'm having a hard time catching my breath here because of how good the detail is um it's muted in some areas i will admit However, still good detail. Back of the leg detail, very nice. The foot detail is very, very nice as well. The feet look a little more muscular, and there's a little bit of angle on this toe, which I'm appreciating a lot. Toenail work is very, very nice. There's a little bit of detail on the toenails. Here's the detail for the inside of the legs. The arms are going to have very similar armored plating here. Going all the way up the arm, then we're going to have these little spikes, elbow spikes. Very, very nice. Moving down the hand, we have more, more of the um, arm and plating detail for the fingers. Kind of muted, pronounced fingernails. Can't tell where the hand stops and the fingernail stops on my copy, at least. Sorry. You guys can't tell because it's blurry. But now that it's kind of in focus, you see what I mean? You can see where their fingernail begins because the arm and plating stops. However, there's not a clear, clear stop. 
What you can see is the webbing between the fingers, which you're gonna see on both hands. Very, very nice detail work there. I like that. I'm moving on to the chest here. The chest detail is very nice. You're gonna be missing this kind of crotch ridge that Godzilla usually has. Um, but besides that, the chest detail is very nice. I love this very different armored plating where again, the armored plating is shifting where the overlay is not consistent, but it looks like it's shifted a little bit. So it looks a little more dynamic, I guess you can say. Chest work, chest detail is very nice. The neck detail is very, very nice. I like how they have the cracks and splits in it. Um, then you have the gill detail, the gills for Godzilla. And then the star is the face. For me, for this Godzilla, this version of Godzilla, Godzilla evolved from MonsterVerse. I really like his face because of how spiky he looks now. And he's pretty much turned into a big ass crocodile is best way I can put it. Um, the dude's work on this face is very nice. Granted, it's muted, but the spikes are very minute details where it's hard to translate into this kind of figure. I get it. Um, I like how they did their best to include the spikes on the eyebrows, the spikes on the top of the head, then the spikes on the cheek going down this way, and even the spikes on the lower jaw, I think, are really really well translated not amazing but i can see the effort was there and it's pretty well done so yeah while we're on the face eye detail is very nice eye is smaller than a 2019 figure makes him look a lot more menacing including the red eye um nostril detail is very nice and the mouth detail is very, very good too. You got the individually sculpted teeth and you have a little tongue on the inside of the mouth too. Detail work for Godzilla Evolve 2024. Very, very nice. The paint on this guy, decently nice. And I'm saying decently nice because this figure left me a lot more desiring than the 1964 figure which we reviewed about two reviews ago. If I am correct on that, um, I say that because the only paint we have is this pink paint and the paint on the teeth. So the teeth are painted very nicely. However, they use this really weird gray-brown color where it it's really not quite as noticeable as I would like it to be. It's actually brown gray, but either way, not quite as noticeable as I'd like it to be, but I'm cool with it. The teeth are painted and they're painted really nicely. Now, eyes are painted very nicely too. They use the same eye paint as the paint for the dorsal fins and the dorsal fins are amazingly painted. I mean, from the tip of the head, the eyebrows, it goes all the way down to the tips of the thegomizers. Sadly, not on the outside of the thegomizers, but still goes to the very tip of this thegomizer over here. Very nicely done. I'm glad Bandai painted all the way. All the way. And it looks good. I even, I'm very happy they painted this part too. And I won't have to repaint that at least. And they even painted the elbow spikes. Love that. My gripe is the chest ain't painted. You know, they don't really ever paint the chest. Besides the Godzilla 2014 figure, which I really, really like the paint on that figure. But. The chest isn't painted, and the fingernails aren't painted. It's all just left the same color as the base. The only things painted are the teeth and the spines, which I get in the interest of time, they will do that, and efficiency. However, it leaves a little bit left to be desired for this figure. Personally, especially for those who are looking for screen accurate Godzilla figures, Granted, yes, this is a kid's toy. However, I still see the effort they put into quite a few of the other Godzilla figures, which I wish was translated to this figure. But moving on to Godzilla's articulation, his arms can move 360. His legs can move 360 as well. Very smoothly, might I add. Ooh. There is no 
head seam. There's no head articulation. There is a glue seal at the tail. However, the tail does not move. So four points of articulation for Godzilla Evolved. And I will get to size comparison at the very end of this video. But so far, Godzilla Evolved, very nice, very nice, very nice. Detail work is really good. Paint is decent. Um, I appreciate that they painted it, the dorsal plates from the tip of the tail to the tip of the head and the eyebrows. Um, and articulation is about what I was expecting. I like the articulation personally. I don't mind the four points. If they start cutting out the leg articulation for Godzilla, that's when I'm going to start getting a little upset or even the arm articulation. So articulation really, really good too. Moving on to the Beast Glove Kong figure from Bandai Movie Monster Series. Here we have the Kong from the new movie. Uh, this face does not cut it for me. I prefer the Playmates figure Kong face. However, I do prefer this guy more. Let me show you why. The detail work is amazing on this guy, from the scarring to the fur detail on this Kong figure, excluding the face detail. I mean, it's really, really nice. I like all the detail work on this figure. Um, the back muscles are really nicely done, very well defined. The neck ripples are very nicely done. All the fur detail on this guy is very, very well done, including the new beard. That's right, Kong now has a beard. He's starting to look like Kratos from God of War. I'm loving this guy even more, honestly, this 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 iteration of Kong. The really nice fur detail all around on his legs, on his feet. In fact, the front of his feet look a little more grown in from the 2019 version. So really, really cool attention to detail. I might be wrong on that, so don't quote me. But yeah, really, really nice attention to detail. Inside of the arm fur, detail is really nicely done. Finger detail, very nicely done. You see the fingernails over here. And the knuckle detail, very minute, but still really nice. The ear detail, very good. Um, hey, The face detail is really nice. It may not be wholly on point in regards to how they did the face, but the detail is still there. From the eyebrow detail to the cracks on the eyebrow, for, there's even a little bit of scarring on the eyebrows on this side which is really really neat and i'm only noticing that now see a little bit of scarring the nostrils are done very nicely the mouth is done very nicely I like how they added the tongue and there's a little bit of tongue detail in there for kong as well as the individually sculpted teeth for his um roaring mouth yeah very nicely done one of the big changes that a lot of people notice are, uh, besides the freaking giant metal arm is the fact that kong has more scars and these scars are not just painted on they are actually sculpted in which i really like so kudos to bad knife for doing this um i believe he has bigger muscles from the 2019 figure i might die I, I, that's another comparison i have to do i'll do that some other time but now for the main attraction for this kong figure we have his beast glove the arm looks a lot more bigger than the other arm. That is because there's a freaking love on it. And I was thinking that to myself. I was kind of mulling it in my brain. Why does the arm look a lot more huger? It, it, it's, it's because of the glove. Let's get to it though. The arm detail and the fur detail is going to be the same. But the glove detail is really, really good. It's a lot more different from the um, Playmates figure Kong. Where it's got a lot more mechanical details going on there's a lot more paneling um not really a big deal it's just interesting how it differs so much but the gears are very nicely done like the gear work over here um a very nice nuts and bolts as well as the divots for the gear um there's a couple bolts here detailed then all the paneling going down the new mech arm and then there's the straps here a little more paneling detail here for the straps and then you have the fingers, which I think are, the for me, the fav my favorite part of this Beast Glove is the fingers because you have the mechanical finger detail here. Um, you have where they are supposed to, I guess, rotate and bend for this part. 
yeah i mean the finger detail for this is just really really nice and it continues over here to the other side where he's supposed to put his fingers through i mean the little things like that are really what make a figure and i really like that personally and then you got the same fingernail detail here. You got a strap detail over here on the inside of the hand. And that does it for the Beast Glove. Detail work on this Kong figure and with the Beast Glove. Really, really good. Beast Glove detail. Different, but good. And I haven't watched the movie yet, sadly. I know, I'm a Godzilla reviewer. I'm a Godzilla fan. I should have watched the movie by now. But I have been really, really busy, which is why I have had a hard time finishing the Final Wars video and getting out new videos um, hopefully getting, going to be able to get back on it since summer's coming up, but talk for another time because let's finish reviewing Kong. Kong is going to take the cake with this one for paint because Beast Gloves fully painted, very nicely, very nicely painted. No leaks, no spills on mine, no mishaps. I like this. Only missing thing would be the numbers and the Beast written on the glove but that is no biggie because you got the yellow you got the silver nothing spilling over it's really good really 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 good um the paint detail for all of kong's fur very nicely done you have some of this really nice gray accents which i like i'm sad that it doesn't translate all over the body because you have it on this arm and this shoulder you have it on the legs nothing on the back nothing on this shoulder Nothing in the beard, which I think they should have painted the beard a little bit because it looked a little gray from the trailers. I mean, not a big thing for me. However, I feel like there's a missed opportunity there. But I'm not going to ding them on it a lot because of the fact that Kong's face is painted very nicely with this um, gray monkey skin face and the monkey skin chest area. Very nicely painted. I like how they painted the scars with this darker pink. And then you got the very nice mouth paint with the teeth and the gums painted very, very nicely. There's a little bit of spill for the gums and the teeth paint, but I'm not going to fault them on it because even I have a hard time painting these. The eyes are painted very nicely as well. Um, they look like they are looking forward, which they, they are. I suppose you can say they are. And if you look at it head on, it looks very menacing. It doesn't look goofy at all. But if you look at it like this, it looks a little bit goofy. Um, the eyes are a little bigger, giving him, Kong a more human approach, I guess, with this figure, which is practically what they're trying to give him in this movie, which is kind of a cool translation figure-wise. I'm not, I cannot complain about the paint at all for Kong, unlike I can for Godzilla. So, yeah, articulation. Makes me a little sad, but I get it. You only get two points of articulation, being this arm and this arm. There is a glue seam at the waist, however the waist does not move. Like the other Kong, the waist is glue sealed. I'm I'm sad that they're kind of glue sealing the waist for the Kong figures. Um, I get why, because the waist is like an oval, so it'd be hard to make it move justifiably without it looking weird. Moving on to size comparison, since we got detail, cut paint, and articulation all the way for these guys size comparison they size up perfectly as they look in the movie godzilla is quite a bit taller than kong and kong is shorter than godzilla like how they should be and i mean i just yeah they, they size up perfectly in i mean if we try to have godzilla suplex kong i think this looks about right yeah i think that looks about right or even if we have Kong ride Godzilla, this looks about right as well. So sizing, movie accuracy, sizing wise, it's perfect. It's it's perfect. I, the size is really, really nice. Um, we won't know how they size up against the villains until we do have the villains in hand, but that'll be a video for the future because we did, we do have news that Bandai Movie Monster Series is we're gonna release a Shimo figure We'll see how that goes. Um, and I haven't heard anything about Scar King yet. So, yeah, we just have to wait. But for now, these two size up perfectly with each other. And they size up perfectly with the Mothra figure that came out for the King of the Monsters. However, I bought another one 
and I repurposed her and I painted her to match the um, Mothra Reborn figure colors. So yeah, they size up perfectly with her as well. Okay, overall, who do I recommend you guys get these figures? Um, over the Playmates one, if you guys are looking for something that focuses more on detail versus movability, playability, I recommend you guys get these figures because the detail work on these guys are really, really nice. Um, paint for Godzilla is going to be a little bit desired. Kong paints amazing. I really like the paint on Kong. Um, articulation is going to lack compared to the Playmates figure for Kong. I'm just saying because it is a soft final figure and it is a Bandai soft final figure. So articulation is going to be minimal, but it's going to be enough for the average kid. Or for me, it's enough because I don't like figures that move around a lot. That's why I stopped getting SH Monster Arts, which is also why you don't see me reviewing a lot of SH Monster Arts figures or NECA figures, even though NECA is a lot more durable. If you're looking for figures that are a lot more durable, are more focused on detail, um, for Kong, the paint's a lot better. For Godzilla, face is a lot more accurate looking. The eyes are painted very nicely. They don't look cross-eyed or like lazy eyed. Um, I do recommend you guys get these figures. With that being said, this has been Shanzala 1964. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button down below. Um, if you think I may miss anything, if you think the Godzilla's perfect the way he is, if you think Kong sucks compared to the Playmates figure, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below and let's have that conversation because I'm willing to debate the shit out of that. Because I personally like this Kong better than the Playmates one. Um, simply based off the paint and the detail work alone. Granted, the face does look worse than the Playmates one. I will give you that. However, personally, again, I am biased for Bandai. So, yeah. And if you like what you see on the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But this has been Chanzala 1964 saying until next time, guys. Peace, peace. you